Hello and welcome to Odd Sock Comics. This is my new comic book day, comic book haul for January 23rd, 2019. And this week was a pretty calm week at the comic shop. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff that had me interested. I'll go through the books that I got, but I really only picked up four. And I even considered some others, but there really wasn't anything that I wanted and I had to limit myself. I actually bought some books that weren't originally in my consideration. Actually, two of the four I wasn't planning on getting. So this was really, really a light week uh, as far as books that are interesting to me is concerned. But I am going to show you what I got. And uh, then I'm going to show you a few of the other things that I picked up throughout the week. Uh, it was kind of a fun week, generally speaking, just for new comic books. Not a lot going on. So the first book that I've got up here from my new comic book day haul is Guardians of the Galaxy number one. This is a relaunch of the team. Uh, it's been kind of highly touted. It's Donny Cates that's writing it. So it's, you know, he does a lot of good stuff. I kind of feel like he's, uh, see, he did really well with Thanos. And so this is going to, you know, continue down the Thanos line. And so that's going to be interesting, but... I don't know. The uh, the space stuff kind of loses me. I didn't like... I don't like the Avengers. I don't like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, really. This is not my kind of thing. I don't like the space battles. That's not my kind. I like things that are connected to the Earth and very close. Like, I don't even like Batman when he's going against cosmic entities or anything like that. I like Batman when he's dealing with very human issues. That's just my personal preference. I know that there are people that love the complexity of the science fiction world that they create and all the cosmic entities and everything. Fantastic for you. That's not for me. I grabbed this one. I may go through two or three more to see if Donny Cates is going to tie something crazy together. That would be a lot of fun, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm, I'm not planning on, on continuing with Guardians of the Galaxy indefinitely. It's an interesting one. We'll see. But this is the uh, the Groot cover, obviously. I think it's kind of fun. In this book, Groot is a whiny teenager, which is kind of hilarious because it really does sound a lot like a few of the whiny teenagers that I know. So they do a good job of writing whiny teenagers. Who'd have thought it? Okay, next up, I have Batman 63. And this is the... Uh, Tony Daniel cover, the B cover. Now I've had some good experiences with, with uh, Tony S. Daniel. Once I let him know that somebody that he was on, on Twitter, somebody that he was uh, quote tweeting had blocked me so I couldn't see his art. And he posted up another picture and he kind of understood that, you know, some of the comic book creators don't necessarily follow everybody. and but he didn't want to, you know, disown me because I'm in a part of that group. So I appreciate Tony S. Daniel. And when he does a Batman cover, I tend to grab it regardless. And there are things that are excellent about this cover and there are things that aren't all that great. <laughs> My wife came in and she was looking at it and she said, what is going on with his, uh, his stomach? <laughs> like, what's wrong with Batman? <laughs> And I laughed and she said, oh, that's what sh what they mean when they say shredded. I just thought that was funny. But the book itself, uh, it's definitely in the character development. It continues with this story of, you know, Batman coming out of whatever he's been in, uh, you know, kind of a, a sleep, a nightmare, whatever it is. Uh, still don't have an answer, but it, th this is all very much character development. And I've been thinking about this quite a bit because I really like this run of Batman because of the character development. Uh, you know, if you want the action stories, I hear detective comics, I haven't gotten into detective comics, but those are a lot more action oriented. If you want the team dynamics and the Batman solving super complex problems or whatever, you've got the, uh, the Justice League and uh, you know, whatever else he's doing on that side of things where Scott Snyder's putting all of that together. But this Tom King run is really about developing the character of Batman. Now in some ways, He's kind of wimped down Batman, where Batman becomes this needy, heartbroken guy, which doesn't really mesh with the, the hard superhero Batman. But but like around the edge, he's always got a little bit of, you know, the that attitude of 
do whatever you need to to get the job done and you're going to solve all the problems and everything. So I'm not sure how it's all going to end up. I don't think they're going to weaken Batman as you finish the arc, but because the arc is taking so long, it's spending a little bit too much time kind of down in the dumps, something that probably should have been resolved a little bit faster, like within one book instead of lingering on for four or five books through this massive story arc. But hopefully it all comes to an end uh, in something that's meaningful. Tom King, like I said, I don't think he finishes his stories very well. I'm hoping he will with this one. It goes, <laughs> I think his story is planned through issue 107, so it'll still be a couple years that I'm following through with this. We'll see where it ends up, but whatever. Okay, next up I have The Incredible Hulk number 13. And again, this one was not a lot of action. Uh, it was a lot of backstory and developing what the Hulk is and uh, how the Hulk uh, became, you know, was, was influenced by family and all these kinds of things. And it's a lot more talking. It's a lot more philosophizing about what is the devil. And then obviously they're tying that into what the Hulk is that he's, you know, this is the Hulk in hell storyline. So it's very interesting. Uh, not a lot of action. Uh, it's not, I, th this one by itself standing alone is not as deep. I mean, you, you kind of get to the end and there's a the little twist on it and you see it coming from a mile away. It's very, very obvious. Uh, so it's, you know, maybe I was hoping for something a little bit more, uh, more thoughtful, less expected, uh, but whatever. The story is still good. It's one of the best uh, storylines out there. It is interesting. It is a character development of the Hulk, who has some really interesting, complex character. So very cool book. Worth the read. Probably my choice for the best book of the week. Uh, but there really wasn't much else. It, there wasn't a lot of competition, so it's not fantastic. It's not a book that I'll remember I need to go back to later. Maybe maybe it will tie into a story down the line that makes it more impactful, but right now it's a it fairly just a simple step along the way. Okay, now this book <laughs> I was not planning to get at all, but I kind of love Lady Death. I, I learned a little bit about it because Art Germ did a Lady Death cover uh, that's very exclusive, very difficult to get a hold of. I was able to get a hold of the, one of the black and white copies of of his Lady Death run. Uh, I think it's Nightmare Symphony. But because of that, I kind of met and talked to a few of the people who are really into Lady Death. And it is just a story that is all about fun, all about action, all about heavy metal and I kind of like that. Uh, I've learned that I like that more than I thought I would. So I grabbed this one. Not to mention that the the cover is just is just it's 1940s pinup, rockabilly pinup, whatever. I don't know if that's 1940s, but that's what it reminds me of. Like I love the haircut. I love the style. Obviously it's a little uh you know eye candy. That's not the most interesting thing or the most important thing, but I do love the pinup style. That's fantastic. Um, so I got this very cool bombshell edition of it. I read the story. It's number one in a story that's going to continue on. I'll probably pick up number two as well. Uh, it was good. I like the cover too. This is going to go in, in the stack of, of covers that I'll, I'll keep all of that I will, you know, if I, I'm putting up a, a wall of the, uh, the eye candy, the Frank chose and then trying to get a little variety on that wall, this one will go up. No problem. Uh, but that's it for new books, just the four of them. So pretty calm, pretty calm week for, uh, for new books. But I have a couple of other things that came in. So first of all, let's, uh, let's go with this book right here. So this is a special variant. Actually, yeah, the, uh, the lighting's not great, but we'll see what I can do. So this is a, a variant of uh, The Web of Carnage or The Web of Venom, Carnage Born, uh, that came out a few, a month or two ago. And I saw this, and I, it's, it's obviously a re-envisioning re of the first appearance of, of Carnage in Amazing Spider-Man 361, but just done in a modern style uh, by, by Scon, I think, is the artist. And I think even in the bottom right corner, it says... Scon after Bagley, who did the original uh, Spider-Man 361. 
So I, I saw this. I've had the Amazing Spider-Man 361. Carnage was, when I was growing up, Carnage was one of those, you know, really creepy uh, characters that I just loved. One of the few that I actually knew as a kid growing up. And he was always like, yeah, Carnage. So when I started collecting, I knew this was one of the books that I was going to get. And then when I saw this, uh, this homage to that book, I thought it was really cool done in the modern, a modern, you know, more digital style. And I appreciated it. So I'm going to keep these two books together. It's not going to be worth a lot, but it's just fun to have the two versions and the rethinking of how you might do that uh, today. So that one was very cool. Uh, I had to pay, you know, kind of just mark a price for this. I think it was about $14 shipped. Uh, not bad, not great. Just couldn't find it any cheaper than that. Uh, would... Yeah, so I grabbed it. All right, next up is my kind of luck of the week. So I went into a shop that I'd never been in before. They had a couple of uh, of bins that they hadn't searched through and they didn't have anything marked as prices. And I hate shops that are like that. But so as I'm walking through, I spot, or as I'm going through a, a box that has a bunch of books that are not, uh, that don't have prices marked. I see these two books. Now this is Star Wars number two and three, but these are the reprint editions. They're, they're listed as 35 cents. The original was 30. And then you can see right there, it says reprint. So, I mean, I knew up front that these ones were reprints, but I also saw along with them, this book. So Star Wars number one. And I was trying to think through, uh, how do you tell if it's a reprint? I know that there were several prints of, of Marvel num or of Star Wars number one, uh, but I, I wasn't positive if this was a reprint or not. Uh, and, and I didn't have enough time to kind of research. And I didn't want to give off the feeling that I thought it was something valuable because the way that they uh, picked the price is they, they had a, a, a guidebook. I, I don't know if it was Overstreet or what, it was a little little paperback book that had everything in it. And I handed them, I handed him all three and said, what are, what's the price? And I'm like, well, you know what this one is. And because the other two were obviously reprints, I was kind of hoping that he would interpret this one as a reprint and we'd see what it was. So he, that's exactly what he did. He said, okay, yeah, the reprint, it's worth about 10 bucks in this condition. I'll give it to you for five and for two and three, let's do five for the two of them. So I paid 10 bucks for these three books. But when I got it home, did a little bit of questions running around and the reprint version looks exactly the same, has the same uh, barcode and everything, but it also has reprint right along the, uh, just like the other books in, in that little corner box. So this is a first issue of Star Wars and I paid five bucks for it. And I think it's worth, you know, it's not in, it's not in great condition at all. It's probably maybe a, a very good, Possibly, I don't even know if it's if it's there, but I, I was looking at some others that online, and it seems like they are getting bids and selling for thirty to fifty dollars. So thirty to fifty dollars on a five dollar book, I'll take that all day every day. Not anything super exotic, but I thought it was a great find. Uh, anytime I get get one and kind of sneak it under the radar, especially from from a shop that's kind of that shady style where you know you do all the work of looking through the bins to find valuable books and they charge you almost full price for them. Anyway, that always bothers me. It's like, if you wanna charge full price, you guys do the work, you put them in the bag and board. If I'm doing the work of having to search through them, I should get a discount, you know, just to say this whole bin, this whole box is three bucks a book or something. But anyway, I picked up these three. Uh, obviously these two are, are worth, nobody's really gonna buy them. They're, they're gonna be fun to read. Uh, I'm gonna read the whole set because I've heard that the tone is off from the movie because it, they were uh, put together before the movie was released, before they'd seen the movie. They had the script, but not the tone, right? <laughs> okay, I picked up three other books from the same shop. So first of all, I got an art germ, Batgirl number 12 from the New 52. Uh, nothing special about this. It's not valuable, but it's, it's a nice art germ cover. I actually have it. I knew that I had it, but I was like, this one might be in better condition than the one that I have. This one is, is very, very nice. So I was thinking I might take this nice copy and replace my old one and swap it out or something. I'm not sure exactly. Then I picked up these two 
reader copies that are a little bit older. So one is Mr. Miracle number three. Nothing special about this one. I, it, as far as I know, it's not a first appearance or anything. It's just a fun early issue, Mr. Miracle. I have Mr. Miracle two and four. I did not have three. So no matter what, this is a good one to fit into that buildup that I've, I've been kind of developing that. I'll pick up number one eventually, um, and I, I'll probably get most of the first run. It's a pretty fun. I, I, I've read most of it uh, on a, most of the graphic novel of the first issues of Mr. Miracle, but it's going to be cool to have. This is a really a reader copy. I think the top staples are undone, so it, it really doesn't have any value. I, I paid $3 for it, so I mean, it might be worth a few if it was in better condition, but I don't think that anyone's actually going to buy it. And then I got this New Gods number eight. I love Kirby. Um, I, I would just like roll through the, the pages and just enjoy all of the little, uh, the, the anatomy and the way that Kirby draws. It's definitely worth looking at the faces. Oh man. But uh, I just got it because I wanted to look through, look at some, some Kirby art. Uh, I'll read it and enjoy it. Uh, it's, again, I paid $3 for it probably worth about that. So nothing special, but I do like these old books. I like the feel of them. I like the smell of them. I like, you know, the, the way that the, the pages feel on your fingers. It's just takes you back to another time. It, it's something that's really cool. And to be able to pick those up for $3, the same price that I'm getting a new, a new book for, I'll do it almost every time if it's something that, that has some meaning to me. So some cool books. Okay, I've got one more that came in the mail. This one, this one I honestly bought on a whim. I don't know much about it. <laughs> There's a, uh, I, I, w I saw it and uh, I, I heard somebody referencing that, and maybe you guys can remember who it was. Just, you know, I, w I watch a lot of people's hauls and, and one guy that knows way more about comic books than I do was like, every time I see this book for under $15, I buy it. <laughs> and so I, I saw a copy on eBay and uh, it looked like it was in good shape. And I think it was at $8 shipped. Uh, and I, I had to bid up from there, but so I bid on it and I, I ended up getting it for like eight sixty shipped or something like that. And so it's under $15. It's a, the first appearance of Blue Devil. I have no idea really what uh, Blue Devil is, but <laughs> apparently it's a spec book that somebody likes. So I picked it up, it's like eight, 63 something like that um maybe it's a good buy maybe it's not i don't know i'll stick it in in my box and we'll see where things end up uh if i start to have to shave off some some books this was one that i don't really have a lot of connection to that's the last book of the the new books i picked up this week now i did have kind of an interesting uh situation with some auctions i was uh I found a, an estate sale and I almost bought about $200 worth of uh, Spider-Man books between, you know, they were in the range of 252 to 375 and it was uh, probably 100 books, most of them, not, not the big keys, not 300, uh, not 361, uh, but, but most of the other books in that run, and not 252, 252 wasn't, wasn't in there but uh, had a lot of, a lot of the other books. And there's some good stuff in, in that run. And I've, I've always, like, I don't really get Spider-Man, but because he's more of a local hero, that's more of the style that I would probably like. So I've kind of been wanting to get into Spider-Man a little more. I may, it, the, the only problem is that everybody loves Spider-Man. So it's both a good investment because it's probably gonna move basically with, the overall comic book market, it's going to go up when the market goes up and down when it goes down. It's not really going to ever disappear. And that's that's kind of cool. It's not going to see as big a waves as, as some of the other books. So it's probably a good, like, a fine way to, if you're going to put some money in comic books, uh, Spider-Man's a good one to do it. But uh, I haven't, I haven't really bit that yet. Uh, it's just there. Everyone has Spider Man. Everybody wants Spider Man. I've actually got a guy that I work with that uh, has a big run of Spider Man that he's just kept. He, he just ha has always been subscribed to Spider Man and has had it for years and years and years and years. And he's about to retire, 
and I may make him an offer to pick up his entire run of Spider-Man uh, before he retires. We'll see. That would be an interesting one. I'd probably have to drop a fair chunk of change for it, but uh, that might be fun. Every single book in there. So, uh, okay, that, that's it for this week. The one thing that I do want to remind you, if you've stuck around here this long, then you really should uh, enter my contest. I'm going to be giving away this book. Uh, I'm going to link to the, the contest video in the description here, right up top. The first link will take you to the contest video. As soon as I get 10 entries, I'm going to do a drawing, and one of those 10 entries is going to get this book. Right now, I don't think I have any entries, so the odds are very good. Uh, all you have to do is uh, comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. I have, I think, 10 subscribers. I know that's not very many, but I'm just just enjoying it right now. I'm going to do this whether I have subscribers or not. Hopefully, I give you something that's a little bit interesting. I, I'm talk, I, I think I talk about comic books in a way that's a little bit different than other people out there because I'm not a huge comic book fan. I'm thinking about it more on a... A, uh, as, an, as a newcomer that's just developing into this. So a little bit different. Uh, maybe that's interesting. Maybe it's not. I plan on getting into a couple of, of things uh, to show some, some considerations for how to value and how to think about investing in comic books if you're actually thinking in terms of investment. Uh, not, not in terms of like advice for what to buy, but just some some general concepts. Uh, like I'll, I'll give you a quick one right now. Um, so I bought the Tedesco cover of Harley Quinn for $10 plus tax. So it was uh, close to $11 it is what it, I took it home for. The book is currently selling pretty actively on, on uh, eBay right now for about $26. That's if I were to sell my book, uh, I would be able to sell it for 26, but eBay takes 10% of that and PayPal takes a little bit more. So I'm down to, you know, 24, 23, somewhere in there. No, way, way, way below that, 22. So I'm down to $22. Uh, so is it worth it for me to sell that book and get $10? Uh, is that something that's worth it to me? Considering that how, how fast that return is, whether... Uh, the effort of getting it sold is is worth it or not. That's the kind of stuff that I can talk about and really dig into. I am a business person by profession. I think about these things often. And uh, I, I, I'm really have a different way of considering uh, when when to hold and when to buy comic books that a lot of people, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of comic book collectors who their strategy is, buy and hold indefinitely and then I'll sell them all when I'm going to retire or I'll just retire and read them. You know, <laughs> uh, that, that's a weird way to invest for me. My, my way to invest is to optimize your return on investment if you're thinking in terms of investment. So I have my comic books that I want to collect because I want to own them. I have no intention of selling them. That's my art germ collection, uh, my Batman run, no intention of selling that. But there are other books that I pick up. Some of them I don't even care to, to hold that long. I don't want a big to take up a ton of space in my house. So those books will come and go, uh, and that's something that I'll talk about. So I'll get into some detail on that. I'm getting some equipment to uh, be able to sit at my computer and, and show some screens and some, some ways to calculate and look at things and value things that, that I think might be interesting. That's coming down the line. Right now all I'm doing is shooting with my phone. But anyway, if you've, if you've sat through all of this and you're not bored to death, then you really should subscribe and you really should enter to win this book because I would love to give you an Adam Hughes Power Grill book. I was just looking up the value of this on coverprice.com. I think it's $37.50. Now, I don't know if that's a very accurate price because not a lot of them sell, but I think it's. I think I saw one recently. It was just a plain copy, nothing special about it for about $28. So it really is a pretty valuable book that you can get for free. So why not enter the contest? Anyway, that's all I've got today. Uh, thanks for listening to me. Let me know uh, what you think. If I said something that's interesting or off, let me know. I'll make corrections uh, and we'll roll from there. Just uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, let me know what you think, and have a good day.